How do you download VMware's ESXi version 7 hypervisor for free? How do you install it? Where do you get a free license from to then run it? Well, stick around and watch this video and we'll go through the entire process from downloading, installing and applying the license. Now I've been using ESXi for quite a while now, but we're at that time where I want to replace the hypervisor that I've got with version 7.0. And I must admit, trying to find a free version with a free license, it can be a bit tricky if you don't know where to look. So that's what we're going to do. First thing we need to do is to go to VMware's website. So here we are on VMware's website. And you do need a user account to be able to get access to the software and license, but it's absolutely free. So what you do is you go up to the login uh, drop down menu up here and you select my VMware because that's what you're creating the account for. It's for my VMware uh, section. So if you've already got an account, you would put your email address and password in here and sign in. But if you are starting from scratch, what you'll want to do is go to the sign up now. Uh, option here click that and it uh, you can see up here it's giving me all the uh, the questions I need to fill in to register so things like my email address password details about myself now by default it does actually assume you're an individual in days gone by it, it assumed you were a company and you know those questions used to come up well, well what company do I actually put it there because I'm it's just me I don't actually work for a company that's downloading the software for me but yeah the, I must admit that's quite good that they made it a lot simpler so fill in your details down here uh, you're going to go through that capture uh, check down there uh, there's some terms of use of down here a privacy policy and so on that you've got to agree to as ever um, if you want you can opt out of their communications down there but once you're done You've got an account and then you can come back to the login page okay then so i'm going to assume at this stage you've now got yourself a login and you should now be able to log into the actual their uh, vmware website or more specifically into my vmware so we put in our uh, details over there so that's our, pass our username over here and our password down here click on the sign in button and then eventually we'll get into my vmware so this stores quite a bit of information, useful information, I must admit. But what we're specifically interested in today is up here. So if we go to the products menu up here, there's an option down here called trial and free solutions. So we click on that. Now we've got things up here. These are all the trials. Now, this is not the version that we actually want to be downloading. I mean, you could do uh, if you'd like, but Keep scrolling down, scroll, 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 scroll. Uh, what we're looking for here is desktop hypervisor. And here we've got an option about, well, it's discussing download free products. And that is the one, the very one that we want. I mean, you can get um, an actual free version of VMware Workstation Player if you want. Uh, there's the VMware Fusion Player there. But what we're specifically interested in is the full vSphere hypervisor also known as ESXi. So in this particular case, we've got the 64-bit version. So we want to click on that link. And then as we wait for the hamster to run around its wheel and uh, get the server working, we've now got some download options over here. So we can either download the ISO itself. We've got a, an offline bundle, but the ISO here is what I'm mostly interested in. It's a manual download. So you click on that and it'll download the actual full ISO image that you can then burn to a flash drive. Up here is your free license key. It says there, VMware vSphere Hypervisor 7 license. So it's not a trial license that you're going to get uh, if you've gone to that previous link, the, the one that normally show you. You're going to get a free license to actually run Hypervisor. You're going to be limited um, to what you can do with a free version I must admit you don't get the full-blown um, software there's, there's there is going to be limits and to be fair if you really want to take full advantage of something like vSphere you you need a full package I mean you need vCenter etc but in our case all I'm interested in is I just want to be able to run hypervisor 
ESXi for free on my server. So it's a case of clicking on that download button, make sure you take a copy of the license key, keep it somewhere safe that you can use, but you can keep coming back to this. Um, it's gonna stay there for quite some time until they obviously take it down. But I would suggest to keep a copy of it and just save you a bit of hassle of having to keep logging back into the website to get it if you uh, keep reinstalling the hypervisor for whatever reason. But yeah, download the ISO image and then off we go. The only thing I would point out though is if you're having trouble actually doing a download, chances are you've probably got an ad blocker on your web browser. It doesn't like it if you've got an ad, uh, an actual something like um, some web browser that's got a, you know, an actual ad blocker that's preventing ads. It, it obviously does some checks back to their server I've found. So do make sure you've got that disabled. But once you download it, next step is we need to actually burn it to a flash drive. Now, one thing I'm going to suggest if you don't already have a copy is to download Rufus. I, I do like this uh, specifically for ESXi. Uh, one of the things it does is, I mean, it'll actually burn an ISO image that you've got to your flash drive to give you a bootable um, flash drive. But one of the things it does, it, it actually detects there's a problem within the bootloader and it'll actually let you fix it. It pops up a warning, as you'll see, uh, as when we go through this process, but it actually warns you about that and it'll, it'll fix it for you. So it makes life a, a lot easier. I have tried other utilities. I mean, some work for some um, ISOs. This one in particular, I, I find definitely works for ESXi. So you want to come to this website if you don't already have it. It's rufus.ie, although I'll have a link for all this stuff down in the description below. But if you scroll down, you can get your hands on a, a Windows version. There's a, even a portable version if you want. But it just ends up looking like this. It's just, you know, point me in the direction of the uh, the flash drive that you want to uh, create. Uh, point me in the direction of the ISO. And that's pretty much it. All the, all the rest, all the other defaults, just leave them as is. But yes, I, I would definitely suggest using this particular one, and that's what we're going to do next. Well, here we are on a Windows machine, and um, I'm actually using a Windows computer because I'm assuming you're actually using Windows yourself. So we've got a copy of Rufus, we've got a copy of uh, the ISO image from VMware, and I've actually jumped ahead a bit because I've, I've got Rufus already up and running. It's just because of the fact that because of the resolutions, I mean, I'm actually remotely logged into this computer. So it's easier for me to position all the windows ahead of time, basically. Otherwise, it starts looking a bit messy. Um, so all I've done is just double clicked on that executable, popped up a warning message saying user access control. You know, do you want to allow this? And it's a case of, well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm quite happy for this thing to wipe the drive. And literally, that's what it's going to do. So just do be careful. I mean, if you've got a USB drive uh, that you're going to use, make sure you are going to wipe the, the drive that hasn't got any data that you want to keep on it. Um, this thing doesn't, it just does not care if you've got you know, anything on that drive. It's just going to wipe it. And um, yeah, I mean, it's not like military grade, sort of like uh, deletion where, you, you know, nothing's going to be recoverable. It's just a case of, yeah, it might still overwrite the data, in which case, yeah, you'll never get it back. So yeah, do be careful because it, it gives you a drop down menu here so you can pick drives. Just do make sure you've picked the right USB drive that you want to use. You don't actually need anything even this size. It's, it's a very small image. I mean, it's what, 360 meg roughly uh, in size, the actual ISO image itself. But once you've got your drive picked there, the next thing is to pick the actual ISO image that you want to burn to that drive. So you would go to the select option here and um, just basically, you know, navigate around your computer to find the ISO image, double click on that image and that's it, job done. Now, all the rest of these settings can leave as is. I mean, it's gonna do a quick format. Uh, doesn't do any checks for bad blocks or anything, which is fine by me. I'm just build, basically building a flash drive, um, you know, a bootable flash drive for ESXi, so I'm not that fussed. So it's a case of just click on the start button and off we go. Now, I'll just drag this menu into view because this is the menu that I was talking about before because it's warning you here that there's, there is a problem where that the, the actual boot menu I think I referred to as the boot installer you know potato potato the boot menu it's saying may not actually appear uh, and I have actually found that if I click on no that will happen what will happen is the computer will boot off the flash drive and then it'll just stop it doesn't actually have a, a boot menu to load and it'll just stop. So you've actually 
got to then tell it to boot the actual drive, which, yeah, it's not that much of a hassle to get around, but the good thing about Rufus is it spots that, it tells you about that, and by default it says, yeah, let, let Rufus fix it. So I'm going to let Rufus fix it. And then off it goes. Now, then we get our warning. i uh, just drag this up to the up to here. And it, it's giving us our last final warning to say, look, you've got to wipe this drive. Are you absolutely sure you want to do this? So, yeah, I mean, I've, I've already wiped this drive anyway. And I think, like I said before, it doesn't really matter if there is anything on there. It's going to wipe it anyway. So we click OK. It's going to start deleting the partitions and then it's just going to start creating everything. And then once it's finished, it's just a matter of pop that USB drive out and then you can use it to boot from your server. Actually, one thing I will mention is once this is actually finished, you get a little folder appears wherever Rufus happens to have been placed. And that actually keeps a bit of a record of this sort of stuff. Because uh, if I go and click on the start button again, all I get this time is a warning to wipe the drive. It doesn't mention the menu anymore. It doesn't say, you know, there's going to be a problem here with the boot menu. So off it goes and it just goes through the whole process. And it's it's because it's actually downloaded this um, correction, if you will, and it's storing it in this folder. So every time I actually try to create one of these new flash drives, it'll remember that original selection and it'll always install that boot menu. So just something to know. Okay then, so assuming you actually went ahead with what Rufus was suggesting, what you'll get when you actually boot your computer off that uh, flash drive is this. Now it actually only stays there for about eight seconds and then by default it'll start the installation process. Now in my case I've actually deliberately halted it just to show you because if you don't do what Rufus suggests you won't see this and the computer will just basically grind or halt and you'll have to manually um, start the installation process. You'll have to tell the computer to boot off that uh, flash drive. So what we're going to do is just going to go with the defaults, which is to, to start the installation process and then off it goes. So it's got to start loading all of the software off that flash drive. So for me, it's an external USB drive. So take a, a fair amount of time to do it. So rather than watching paint dry, we'll just let this go through its process and then when we're ready to move on to the next step, I'll bring you back. Right then, so now we're back. It's a case of it's loaded the actual installation software into memory and now we're ready to start answering questions. So pretty straightforward, I mean, as far as the ASXi goes, it's a lot simpler than a lot of other hypervisors I've seen. It tends to make the install process easier by not asking you that many things to do and then you've got to do all the hard work after basically um but yeah it's pretty straightforward i must admit so in this particular case it's just reminding us of the compatibility guide now this is just a lab server for me so i'm not too fussed i'm not going to have a support contract for this so it's a case of i know it works so i'm quite happy to just go with what i've got so i'm just going to hit end to continue and then we get the end user licensing agreement which we've obviously got to agree to as well And then it's going to start scanning the computer for drives that we can actually install ESXi onto. Now, in my case, I'm using a Dell uh, server, which it could be booted off an internal flash drive or an external flash drive. Or in my case, what I've done is I've replaced the actual CD uh, drive with an actual SSD drive instead. So it's done a scan and it's detected a, an actual internal SSD, and that's the one it's suggesting. Uh, the next one's an NVMe drive, which, it, although it supports the actual drive, it will not boot from it. And obviously there's no point actually installing it back onto the same USB drive we're installing from. So in this case, we're just going to go with a default suggestion, or I could just use the arrow keys to, to change to something else if I wanted to. But this is what we're going with. We're going to install on an internal SSD drive. And then it's going to actually start checking the actual drive itself. So it's warning me that there's already a copy of ESXi installed and it's giving me choices like, do you want to upgrade it? Do you want to uh, install a new copy, uh, preserve the original data store? Now, in my case, I actually want to uh, start from scratch. So I'm going to go for that option, hit the space bar to choose that uh, new decision where we just overwrite everything. And then we go with OK to carry on. 
it asks for my keyboard layout, which in my case will be for the UK. So I'll select that. Now it's asking for a password. Now, in this particular case, since it's an actual video I'm doing, I'm not really fussed about the password. I can keep it quite simple. But as a best practice, you should be using a strong password, even in a lab. Um, you never know where a, a lab server, for instance, could get to. So it's better to make sure these things are, are properly locked down. But like I say, this is just a video. So I'm just going to make something as simple as I can for now anyway. Uh, just change that now that I've typed it in wrong. There we go. And then we hit enter to continue. And it is a bit fussy. You have to have certain characters in there for it to qualify. Now, in my case, I'm getting a, a bit of a warning that the CPUs, which are Xeon processors, it's saying they're, they're, these are getting a bit long in the tooth. Um, just be wary of the fact that it might not actually get supported in future releases. Again, this is a lab server, so for me, I'm not really bothered. I'm not going to have a lab, uh, an actual sub, uh, support contract with uh, VMware for this server, so it doesn't really matter. As long as it works, it works, and that's all I'm concerned with. So, okay, I'll bear that warning in mind for, for future, but instead we'll just carry on. And then now it's actually telling us it's going to repartition the drive, and it's just giving us one last chance to back out of this, but no, we're going to go ahead, so we'll tell it to install. And then off it goes. So now what it's going to do is it's just going to install ESXi onto that SSS, onto the SSD drive that we uh, selected. And then once it's finished, I'll bring you back. Right then. So it's actually finished installing the software to the drive. So it's just coming back for the final uh, decision, which is to say, take that USB drive out of the actual computer because we finished. Uh, Typically, a BIOS will probably be set up so that it actually boots off the USB drive. So there's no point going through the whole process all over again, in which case it's suggesting you take the actual USB drive out now and then you tell the actual computer to reboot. So I'm going to do that, uh, let it reboot, and then I'll bring you back once it's up and running. Well, now that the installation is complete and the server's been rebooted, we've got ESXi up and running. So the next step is to actually apply that free license that we got from VMware. So what I've done is I've pointed my web browser here at the IP address that this server obtained through DHCP. I don't specifically need to change it because it's just a lab, but you can do, and you can do that in the console. But basically we put in our username, which is root, and we put in the password, which is the one that we actually supplied as part of the installation process. And then we click on the login button. Now, when you actually log into this for the first time, you will actually be asked if you want to contribute to VMware's um, services, if you will, by providing analytic information, and by default it will. So that's entirely up to you. But as far as we're concerned, we just want to change this license. So we'll click on the Manage button up here, and then we go to the Licensing tab. Now you can see here, it's actually got the evaluation license applied and it will eventually run out. Uh, it actually tells me how long it's gonna last for, but I wanna change it to that free license that we obtained. So we click on that uh, assign license button there, and now it's asking for the actual license key. So I'm going to copy and paste the license that I obtained into here. And then we'll click on check license. There we go. License key is valid. So we'll now assign that license and that's it. I've now got a free license assigned to the server and that's all there is to it. Well, thanks for making it to the end of this video. I really do hope you found it useful. If so, then do click the like button and share because that encourages YouTube's algorithm to suggest it to other people who might find it useful as well. If you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more content like this, then yeah, do subscribe. Just remember to click the little bell icon though, that way you'll get notifications when I send new content out. If you've got any comments, any suggestions, if you want to leave any feedback at all, please post that in the comments section below. And if you'd like to support the channel, I've left links to both Patreon and PayPal in the description below. But above all, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.